we're looking at the Ten Commandments. Remember that they were put there by God uh, for our well-being, so that we could lead lives of freedom, not there to restrict us or stop us, they're there to release us into all that God's got for us. We're on number six today, and uh, most versions of the Bible are pretty clear. Uh, it says, you must not murder, you shall not murder, thou shalt not murder, and so on. There are one or two uh, that say, you mustn't kill. Um, now, it's interesting because uh, after this time when the commandment was given, there were, of course, many wars that God's people were involved in, the, the Israelites, and corporal punishment was on, on the agenda. And so the, the feeling, I think, is that the word murder is the appropriate word. There are seven Hebrew words for to kill, and the one here is rasa, R-A-S-A-H, and it implies an intentionality and a premeditation. Somebody sets out. And so uh, he's saying, don't set out with a motive of anger or greed or jealousy or revenge to intentionally rob somebody else, rob another individual of their life. Now, one reason for that is, is obviously that all human life is sacred. Everybody, everybody on the face of this earth, even if they don't know it, is made in the image of God. And so life uh, is precious. And uh, we do not have the, the freedom, the permission to rob somebody else of the life that uh, God has given them. Now, um, my guess is most folk watching uh, from HCC or from a, uh, a church situation, as I went through the directory today, I, I couldn't find anybody that I thought, uh, I think they could be in danger of murdering somebody. I don't think there's a murderer uh, in our midst. Somebody would intentionally set out to take another's life. So we could say, well, let's, let's leave it there, and this will be the, the shortest of all the, um, the, the talks on the Ten Commandments. However, hold on a sec. Jesus, as he tended to do, takes things and develops them and adds to them. And uh, here's what it says in Matthew 5, and I'm going to read it in, in the message. Um, sometimes the message just adds a little something that, that kind of makes you think. So this is what the message says. This is Jesus speaking. You're familiar with, familiar with the command to the ancients. Do not murder. I am telling you that anyone who is so much as angry with a brother or sister is guilty of murder. Carelessly call a brother idiot and you might find yourself hauled into court. Thoughtlessly yell stupid at a sister, and you're on the brink of hell fire. But then listen to this. The simple moral fact is that words kill. The words that you use, the words that I use, have the power of life and death. They can bring life, they can bring encouragement, they can bring hope, they can bring healing. But also the words that you and I share can bring damage. They can bring, in a sense, uh, death. And it's interesting that the next verses after that are all about reconciliation. Jesus says, if you've got a problem with somebody, if you're angry with somebody, which implies it's okay, we understand that happens, but he says, if that does happen, be reconciled, uh, get, it, get it sorted out. And, and so let's just receive from that commandment the truth that our words can be words of life, they can be words of death. Colossians 4 says, let your speech always be full of grace. Hebrews 12 says, make every effort. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> you, you may need to try hard. Make every effort to live at peace with all men. Let's be those who minister words of life. Just one little thing on the end. Let's not confuse that with saying, you mustn't be angry. Anger can be an incredibly wonderful, blessed and positive thing. And William Wilberforce got really angry about the slave trade. He didn't dwell on it and sit there stewing. He did something about it. If we're you, if anger drives us to to bring something into to the community, into into society that is a blessing and a help to people, that is wonderful. But we're saying, don't let anger be something that is is, uh, is to do with your personal angst, uh, your, your your personal feelings towards a person or a situation. So there you go, folks. Uh, one of my little goals, I set for myself and maybe set for you. After a quarter of an hour with you, after a quarter of an hour with me, how do people feel? Do they feel encouraged? Have we brought them words of life? God bless you.